If there's one thing I realized last week, it's that my wallet is gonna be pretty light in 2022. At the running event earlier last week, they came out with so, so, so many amazing looking speed day shoes. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to talk about the top four speed day shoes I'm excited for in 2022, but there's also gonna be a catch to this video. We're gonna continue on building the second part of the Harry Potter Lego set that I picked up last week. If you missed the last video I did, we built the first part of the Lego set, which was fluffy. And we spoke about the daily trainer set I'm most excited for coming into 2022. So without further ado, let's get into the build and start talking about my most anticipated fast day shoes. Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name is Brendan. I'm a Halifax, Nova Scotia based runner who talks about running a lot on the internet from running shoes to running training, all that good stuff. If you're into that, please hit the subscribe button right down below. And if you find this video entertaining, useful, whatever the case may be, please hit the like button down below. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button twice. It won't really matter anyway. Now let's get into the video. So very quickly, here's what we're gonna wanna get at the end of this build is this weird looking building here with Ron Weasley and a harp. That seems pretty cool. And here is the bag of parts we're gonna do it with. All right, so here's what we have so far with the Harry Potter build set, but let's talk about the first shoe on our list, which is none other than the Saucony Endorphin Speed number three. Now, they've made quite a few changes to this shoe and I'm not entirely sure how most of us are gonna take them to be quite honest. So the Saucony Endorphin Speed, for those of you that don't know, was one of the most hyped up, actually it's not even hyped up, it deserves the hype for being one of the best shoes coming out of the last couple of years. The initial version, the version one, caught us runners by storm and we fell in love with its responsiveness, its lightweight package, and its almost carbon racer feel in a normal day package is what it felt like. You could use it for your daily training runs, your faster runs. It was an extremely versatile shoe. Now, some of the changes that they're making to the third version of the shoe is making it I don't think a lot of people are gonna necessarily enjoy them. So what they've done is they changed the nylon plate construction is the main thing in my opinion. They still have that S curve shape, so you're still gonna get that speed roll technology, but what they've done is they've winged it around so it wraps around the medial and lateral side of your, your midfoot, and that's supposed to add a little bit more stability. But the thing is, not everyone needs more stability. And what they're trying to do, in my opinion, is separate their racing line from their training line, from their speed line. And what it's all meant to do is to sell more shoes. That's the honest truth. It's to sell more shoes because the Saucony Endorphin Speed could be used for that same thing as what the people are using the Endorphin Pro for. So a lot of people just opted to save the 50 bucks or whatever the case may be and go for the Saucony Endorphin Speed. But now the Saucony Endorphin Speed, they've kind of realized that people are using it for daily training runs and they're using it for fast day stuff and racing stuff. So what they've done, if they made it more of a daily trainer-esque style of speed day shoe rather than a racing focused speed day shoe. And how they've done that, if, like I said, they changed the plate. They've also widened the base of that midsole so it's a bit more inherently stable. They've added a bit more midsole underfoot, even though the stack heights remain in the same, you're getting a higher volume of stack height underfoot. They changed the upper bit. I think it's gonna be a bit more of a heavy upper. So there's a lot of different changes that I don't necessarily agree with, but me being someone that is, someone that needs a little bit more stability in my life, even though the Saucony Dwarf Speed version one and version two and Run Shield version are some of my favorite shoes, I think that this next version is also gonna be a winner for me. It is gaining a little bit of weight and is remaining at that price point of 160 US dollars or 200 Canadian dollars. So. The Saucony Endorphin Speed number three, some changes I'm not necessarily agreeing with at this time, but time will tell. It's gonna be an interesting choice. Let me know what you think of the changes that they're doing to the Saucony Endorphin Speed number three. Now, let's get back to the build. Okay, and our next checks point, and now we're gonna be talking about the second shoe on the list, the New Balance Rebel version three. Now, the Rebel version two is a shoe that I honestly haven't been able to get a lot of use of because it's ultra soft, but it's also ultra fun to run in. But being ultra soft and me, like I said, being a little bit shaky with my ankles and my feet not being the strongest, I just haven't really been able to get good use out of it. But the changes that they're making to the Rebel version three, again, are changes that I think are gonna make a big difference to my foot strike and me being able to use that shoe a bit more. And that's something that they did say in some interviews that I watched that they're trying to make the shoe more accessible for more different types of runners. And that's something I really appreciate. We're gonna get that same fuel cell midsole that we got in the version two, but just gain two millimeters of foam in the midsole. And I personally think that that is a great thing to do. Now, like I said, the Rebel version two was a little bit soft, a little bit shaky for me. And 
adding height to the midsole is only gonna make it a little bit more unstable, but some of the changes that they also made to the, to the overall structure of the shoe, I think is gonna help with that that we'll talk about here in one second. Now, I'm really excited that they added a bit more stack height to the midsole of the Rebel, because I did feel that it was just a little bit low to the ground for me, but I don't know. I'm sure people are not gonna like that as well, just because they're, again, moving towards that higher stack height shoe that I guess a lot of shoe companies are doing, but I mean, why not? Why not, right? And like I alluded to, this shoe seems like it's gonna be a bit better for us more. I don't know, I don't wanna call us a breed, but you know, those people are just slightly over pronate, but we don't wanna wear those big built up running shoes. They've widened out the base of this shoe, so I think it's gonna be a bit more inherently stable and a bit more runnable for me especially. And that's what I'm most excited about for the shoes. So they just widened out the base just slightly. And I think that's gonna make a big difference in the overall runnability of it. They've also changed the outsole and the upper quite a bit. Now the upper, again, is completely different than what we saw on the version two. And this shoe is like, a shadow of its former self compared to the version one, but lots of holes in the upper, so lots of high breathability, and I'm just really looking forward to using that on those hot, humid days here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Let's get back to the build. Next up on the list is a Hoka shoe, yeah? Hoka's bringing in some heat once again, trying to switch up the game, trying to make their style just a little bit different with the Hoka Mach Supersonic. Now, the Hoka Mach 4 is a shoe that I initially didn't really enjoy. I didn't think that it was a great speed day shoe, and I didn't really know where it fit in my overall rotation of running shoes. But since then, I've now been using it for a daily trainer that I can pick up the pace if I want to. Now, a lot of people, they really sincerely enjoyed it for those faster tempo day stuff. But the issue was that for me, I just thought I had better options available to me. The foam was nice and soft and it felt nice and lightweight on my foot. The lockdown was especially fantastic thanks to that upper that was just made of pure gold, except if that gold was a material that wrapped around my foot nicely. That's what it felt like. Now in the Mach Supersonic, it's essentially a Hoka Mach 4 but 4.5 because what they're doing is they're adding a little bit of a different foam where we used to have that ProFly foam, the red foam running through my Hoka Mach 4. It's now a ProFly Plus midsole foam, which is apparently a super critical EVA, I believe it is. So it's supposed to be a bit more lively, a bit more responsive, all those marketing terms. And all for that really means is that it's probably gonna feel a little bit more bouncy on your foot. It's gonna feel like you're not losing so much energy on Toa. And that's something that I've mentioned previously. I think Hoka really needs to innovate on their foams. And I hope that what they bring out to the market this year does just that. And I hope that it continues to excite me. Now, aside from that change in the top sole foam on the midsole, there's practically no change between the Mach 4 and the Mach Supersonic. But the Mach Supersonic does have a pretty darn good looking pull tab. You can pull a Mack truck right out of the dirt with that thing. It seems so anyway, and I can't wait to get it on my foot. But again, this is a shoe that we're gonna have to wait later on down the road. I think it's 150 bucks or something like that. So a little bit more expensive compared to the Mach 4. That could be wrong. I, I don't really know. I wasn't there. This is just me just seeing the shoes and reacting to them. Let's get back to the build. All right, there we go. There is the finished build of the second piece of this thing. Now let's talk about the very last shoe. This is gonna be a brand new shoe on the marketplace. Now this is gonna be called the New Balance Super Comp Pacer. And the Super Comp Pacer is gonna be a very exciting shoe for a lot of different people. What it is, is New Balance's first iteration of a low stack carbon fiber plated racer with their fuel style super foam. And me personally, why am I excited about this? I'm typically someone that likes a little bit of a higher stack, you know, I like that cushion for my weak legs. And I'm just like, I like being babied, okay? just. Leave me alone. I like being babied. But what I'm excited with the Super Comp Pacer is getting a shoe that I can wear to the track. We use it for mile repeats, use it for 800s, that type of stuff. This is where I really think the New Balance Pacer is gonna come into play. And it kind of reminds me, I don't wanna be the one to say it, I don't, but it kind of reminds me of a plated Fuel Cell Rebel version two or version three. <sighs> Maybe I'm wrong, but that is exactly what I think it's gonna be used for and what it's gonna be similar to anyway. So I'm very excited to get that shoe on my foot. Not sure of the price point, but I know it's in the later half of 2022. Essentially all shoes that were announced at the running event are late 2022. Why? 
Doesn't make any sense to me. Why announcing a year in advance makes zero sense. But all right, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this video with a friend and let me know what shoes you're very much looking forward to in 2022 in the Temple and Fast Day category. Thank you so much. I will catch you on the next one.